concussion versus post-concussion syndrome. The difference between concussion and post-concussion syndrome is commonly misunderstood, and these terms are often used incorrectly. Concussion is a brain injury caused by a biomechanical force, such as a trauma or impact, leading to transient neurological dysfunction and a wide range of clinical symptoms. The underlying biochemical, metabolic, and physiologic changes that define the acute injury are temporary, monophasic, and thought to resolve within one to two weeks. In most cases, clinical symptoms follow the same course and completely recover within a similar time frame. However, some people will experience persistent symptoms after a concussion for months or even years. The continuation of symptoms after a concussion has healed is known as post-concussion syndrome. Post-concussion syndrome is not a prolonged or more severe concussion, but a continuation of symptoms for other reasons after the concussion is felt to have resolved. There is no specific time cutoff that distinguishes concussion from post-concussion syndrome. However, when symptoms persist for longer than two to three weeks after an injury occurs, post-concussion syndrome should be considered and the specific contributors to the ongoing symptoms should be explored. In most cases of post-concussion syndrome, there is an initial period of improvement as the concussion heals, followed by a plateau and subsequent up and down symptom course. A detailed history and examination are essential to develop a complete understanding of all factors leading to symptoms at that point. Typically, there are multiple elements interacting with each other over time causing post-concussion syndrome, and the result of these entangled problems tends to be much greater than the sum of the individual components. Each contributing factor needs to be addressed individually to make progress. The cause of post-concussion syndrome is multifactorial and different for every individual. The factors that contribute to post-concussion syndrome are usually related to a combination of pre-existing symptoms or tendencies, concurrent injuries from the same trauma, and changes that occur during the treatment and recovery from concussion. Pre-existing medical conditions that increase one's risk of post-concussion syndrome include primary headache disorder, such as migraine, disorders of sleep, ADHD, learning disability, and mood disorders. Another contributing element to post-concussion syndrome is a separate injury, or injuries, that occurred simultaneously with the concussion but has not been adequately addressed. This can include cervical strain or whiplash injuries, peripheral nerve injuries, and eye injuries. In addition to the improper management of such concurrent injuries, the improper management of concussion itself can increase the risk of developing post-concussion syndrome. While brain rest is commonly prescribed following traumatic brain injury and concussion, excessive rest and avoidance of activity can worsen or prolong symptoms. This is referred to as the unplugged syndrome. Instead, a graded return to usual activities should be recommended for most patients starting shortly after the injury. It is important to distinguish post-concussion syndrome from concussion because the management of these two conditions is different. Post-concussion syndrome requires an active and targeted rehabilitation and treatment process and is unlikely to resolve with just rest and waiting. Understanding the risk factors for developing post-concussion syndrome and recognizing and treating post-concussion syndrome early is essential for improving outcomes and minimizing recovery time. For more information on concussion and post-concussion syndrome, including the 2014 Continuum Issue on Sports Neurology and the most recent consensus statement on concussion in sport, please see the course resources at aan.com view neurobytes.